Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about Databricks high level architecture and the roles that Databricks provide in order to manage its platform. Now, it is very important to pay attention in today's lecture because we are going to use these roles for security, audit and providing access using Unity catalog throughout this course. So, I would recommend you to watch this video very carefully. Now, if you have not seen our previous videos, just go ahead and check them out. Click the i button at the top. Now, in order to work with Databricks, you can use any of the three cloud provider. Either you can use AWS or Azure or GCP. Now, out of these three, you can select any one of them. Now, if you already have a cloud partner, you can just go ahead and have Databricks for the same cloud partner enabled. To get started, first you need a Databricks account. So you need to create a Databricks account. And once you have an account, you can go ahead and create something called Workspace. Now, you can have more than one workspace for a particular account. So you can have, for example, three workspace for this account. And all of these three workspace would be managed from the same account. So whatever work we do, whatever code we write, or we create the clusters, or we work with data, everything is done through this workspace. And in order to manage this workspace, we use accounts. So a particular account can have more than one workspace. So for example, you can create one workspace for your dev environment, one for your UAT environment, and one for your prod. And in this way, you can segregate different workspaces along with different permissions for different users. Now, at the account level, you can do a lot of stuff. You can create meta stores and assign those to different workspaces, or you can have users assigned to different workspaces or groups or something we call service principle. Now, you don't need to worry about all four. We are going to discuss all of them separately. For now, you just need to know you can manage all of this at the account level and can assign them accordingly to different workspaces as per the requirement. So this is how the architecture is. You have an account and you can have different workspaces linked to the same account and you can manage all the workspaces to that same account. Now, tomorrow, if you want to create another workspace, you can create that from the same account. So you can have a different workspace here for a different requirement, say pre prod right so this is how it works now you might have seen urls like this when you create a workspace now out of this you can see we have urls like http adb and there's some number then you have azure databricks.net similarly you can have like this as well you can have adb some number cloud.databricks.com now if you notice this number this is something is called workspace id now, whenever you create a new workspace, you will get a unique ID for that workspace and that is that number. And similarly, one URL, what we call web URL, that would be created for you in order to work with that workspace. And this is where you get into in Databricks and work with Databricks. Now, all of the users connect to this web URL and they can work on whatever persona they use, whether it is data engineering, data analytics, or data scientist. Now, this web URL looks something like this, where you have your workspace ID within that URL. Now, as we already discussed, who can access this URL that can be managed through this account on the users at the account level. So you can assign different users to different workspaces in order to work. And this is how a simple account and workspace architecture looks like. Now let's understand the most important part, which is the high-level architecture of Databricks. The high-level architecture of Databricks consists of two parts. The first one is control plane and the second one is data plane. Now, what is control plane? Control plane is something where Databricks manage your backend services. Now, when we talk about services, it means whatever services that Databricks provide is being managed through the control plane. And the data plane is where your data is being processed. Since both of the plane have different roles, so let's divide it into two parts. So the data plane lies with the customer cloud account. So we'll write customer cloud account. And the control plane lies with Databricks cloud account. And Databricks aligns the services according to the customer cloud account. Now, we know that you need the web application in order to work with your workspace, right? So that would be managed at the control plane. So your web app is managed by the Databricks at the control plane. Now, it also manages information like your notebook configurations, your cluster configurations, or your job information, along with the different logs that is required for all of them to manage. What is there in data plane? The data plane consists of the client's data. So whatever data that client have, will always be available on customer's account only. So the data would not be present at the control plane side. The data will always be present at the data plane side. So the client's data would reside at the customer cloud account. Now, 
clusters that you create in order to process this data will also be created at the client's customer account. So these clusters would be managed by the cluster configuration from the control plane and these clusters would run in the data plane in order to process the client's data and save the data back at the client's cloud account only. So there will be no data movement but the configurations and the access would be managed through the control plane but the data would always reside at the data plane. And this is how a normal Databricks platform works. Now, if your cluster requires to connect with some external data, for example, if you have a different MySQL store somewhere, your cluster would connect with that service and would get the data and process it. Similarly, if the cluster needs to connect to some different data lake in order to get the data, the cluster would connect and process the data here at the data plane side. There will be no data movement at the control plane side. Main purpose of the control plane is to orchestrate or provide the configurations, whatever is required to run your jobs or to your cluster and the code configurations. Whatever data always lies at the customer cloud account only. Now, I believe you understood the main purpose, how the control plane and the data plane is divided. Now, along with this, Databricks also might store some of the logs, version or revision control information or configurations at the customer cloud account. But the data for that customer would always reside at the customer cloud account only. Now, if you're still confused about the notebooks, the job configurations and the cluster configurations, please hold on. We are going to see all of this with live examples in the upcoming sessions. Let's discuss about the roles that Databricks offer. Now, there are four major roles that are involved in a Databricks platform. The first one is account administrator. Now, the main purpose of an account administrator is to create the workspace. The account administrator also works with Metastore. The account administrator is also responsible for users and the permissions that are provided to users for different workspaces. So the user management, the meta store management, and the workspace creation is mainly three important tasks that an account administrator does. Other than this, there are other tasks as well, but these are the three major. Coming back to the next one, meta store administrator. The main purpose of the meta store administrator is to create the catalogs and manage the data objects. For now, you don't need to worry about catalogs. We are going to discuss about catalogs in upcoming session. For now, you just need to know the main objective of Metastore Administrator is to work with catalogs and different data objects. And the Metastore Administrator can provide or delegate quite privileges to different users or owners. The third one is the Workspace Administrator. Now, the Workspace Administrator is the admin of a workspace. Right. So account administrator was the admin at the account level. The Workspace Administrator is the admin at the workspace level. The workspace administrator also manages the users at the workspace level. The workspace assets are also managed by the workspace admin. Now, the privileges for the workspace assets are also decided by the workspace administrator. The final role is the owner. The owner is someone or the user who creates an object. For example, if you create a table, you are the owner of the table. Now, you can delegate that permission to different users but you will be the owner. Similarly, if you create a schema, you are the owner of that schema. All other objects that you create at a workspace level, you will be the owner of those objects. Now, you can delegate different permissions to different users. I know this can sound confusing for the very first time, but you just need to know the different roles that are available and the responsibilities for each of the role. We are going to see all of them live with different examples in the upcoming session. So you don't need to worry about it. Now, in our upcoming session, we are going to set up Databricks. We are going to create our first workspace using Databricks. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.